So uh, today we will learn uh, what is the procedure to uh, do the particle in a potential problem uh, numerically. Okay. So so particle in a potential. So basically. So consider the potential so this is minus a this plus a is basically energy so this is minus b0 ok so minus b is 0 so this is 0 so potential is 0 from minus infinity to minus a and a to infinity it is again 0 between minus a and so the potential is b of x is equal to minus b0 for mod x less than a and 0 mod x greater than a okay so you can put so uh, so this is a potential say considering the realistic situation so we can take uh, for the nucleus uh, um, the it will be around 2 fm take a is 2 fm so what is fm fm is the fermi unit okay so a is equal to 2 fm you take that and uh, what else you have to do is uh, okay um, yeah and uh, b0 you take it as 83 mega electron volt okay these are all some realistic numbers so now you want to solve this problem quantum mechanically and uh, so all of you had some course on quantum mechanics right yeah you yeah, you must have already done this problem, so I don't get into the how to solve this issue uh, I means analytically. Okay, so my intention is to do numerically. So, but I'll give you the brief uh, idea regarding this. So now uh, you know the Schrodinger equation. So basically, what you have to do is we have to solve the Schrodinger equation d square psi by dx square. So what is the short equation? Can you tell me? Yeah? Anybody? You can see the board, right? Plus? B psi is equal to E psi. Okay. So we are looking at a one dimensional problem. So uh, you have to solve this equation. So we are actually only looking at the bound states. Okay. So it is a time independent shorting equation we are going to uh, apply. So if you want to have a um, solution which is bound is there any condition on e negative. so e should be negative right so e should be negative to have a bound solution okay so e if e is positive what will happen what is the problem so e minus v will be uh, positive so you get a solution of 
trigonometric solution, right? So they are not uh, bound solutions. So E should be uh, less than zero. So so now we are looking at the situation E less than zero. But E less than zero, whether E can go any value below, up to what? E should be uh, max, um, uh, minimum minus V zero. So E should be between what and what value? Minus V zero, V zero, minus V zero and zero. Okay. So, Okay, so so in those cases you can have a bound solution for this. Okay, so now what we do is uh, we'll divide this into three areas. Okay, so this is minus v zero, and this is minus a, and this is plus a. Okay, so that is clear. So this is the first, second and 3 area and uh, so what should be the uh, Schrodinger equation here and here okay so in those cases the Schrodinger equation will be minus h cross square by 2m d square because the potential is uh, 0 so what you get is equal to e sin so this is when mod x is right and here what do you get minus v0 sin would be minus v0 okay this you can write it as E plus V0 sine, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So now, if you look at this, what is what can be the solution in this area? So this is for mod x less than. So, what can be the solution here? Exponential. Yeah, psi can be some a e power minus a. beta x. Okay, psi is equal to a e power minus beta x. So, what is uh, beta equal to? Can you tell me what is beta equal to? Root of 2m e by h cross square. Root of? <coughs> 2m e by h Okay, so this solution, this solution uh, at 1 or 2 or uh, 3 or is applicable to both sides? Huh. So let us let us just uh, uh, look at the area. So first, uh, so in the case of uh, minus infinity to minus a, so this should be e power beta x. So in that case, what is beta equal to? Root of There is a minus. There is a minus. There is a minus. Okay. So the inside quantity is positive actually. And what about the place three? What will be psi equal to? Psi 
some c e power minus minus beta x but beta is same right so that is uh, fine okay so those two cases are clear and uh, what about here in the middle what is the solution what is so hmm. so you know that e is, e is between uh, e is negative and e can take value between 0 and up to minus v0 so so this quantity e plus v0 will be is it always positive or negative value wise always positive always positive okay so so what is the solution then sin or cos so now i am just looking at the uh, even solutions so that cos solutions okay so in that case i can write down the the section 2 the solution psi is some b cos alpha x right so what is alpha equal to right okay fine so you know that uh, at uh, these two boundaries the solution should be continuous and also first derivative should be same right that also should be continuous so if you take those two conditions okay so if the solution is so, so let us look at here okay at this point so you should have the condition c okay a e raised to okay we want the, the at 3 okay so c e raised to minus beta a right which should be equal to what b with b cos alpha a right yes or no yeah so what about the yeah 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 so what about the first derivative okay so b equal to b is it correct into alpha okay so if you divide this with this what you get beta is equal to alpha tan beta is equal to alpha tan alpha n right yes or no yeah so this is what uh, you are getting and uh, so basically you have to solve that equation okay alpha a tan alpha a minus beta so finally So you have to solve this transcendental equation. This you can only do numerically. 
okay so tan alpha i so this is uh, uh, so okay uh, i'll give you uh, two minutes you tell me in this problem how many unknowns are there All of you just think about that two minutes and you tell me how many unknowns are there in this problem. So you tell me how many unknowns are there? Yes. The equation or the whole problem? All problem, all problem. Uh, A, B, C, and E. A, B, C, then? E. E. Okay. So, four unknowns. Sir, technically speaking, C should not be unknown. You tell me, you, 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 te you, you tell me the reason for that. Uh, initially, we wanted a solution to be given. So, A and C should be same. No? A and C should be same? Uh, because we wanted... No, no, you have taken, see, we have taken that it is cos alpha. So, that already done. But with the given equations, can you tell me that A and C should be same? Okay. I don't remember what which was the psi 1 or psi 2 we have written. Uh, okay, psi 1 is correct. E power minus plus uh, psi 3 is this. So, psi 1 is A e power. Okay, so let us see because there are four, see currently we have a four unknowns. We have to find out those four unknowns, okay. So, um, if you solve this transcendental equation, what are you going to solve? Solve for E. Solve for E because alpha and beta contains E, right. Alpha and beta contains E. So, you are going to solve for E. So, when you do that. So, you, you can get E from this. Okay, now how do you fix the other three? So, so if I know E, I know alpha and beta. So, I know beta A, alpha A. So, so from uh, this equation what you can get? Relationship between B and C. You get a relationship between B and C. So, if B is known, C is known. Right? Yes. Yes. So, yes. so in principle, one of them is gone. Okay. Now there is two remaining, A and B. The other boundary condition. Which one? The other boundary condition at x equal to minus A. Ah, so from that you can get a one relation between A and uh, C. Right? A and B, whatever. A and B you can get. A and C also you can get. Okay. So, A and B you can get. Okay. So, now it boils down to one unknown. How do you solve that, that one unknown? Normalization. You do the normalization and solve that. Okay. So, now if I solve this transcendental equation, you know how to get all this A, B, C. Okay. And uh, E, this will give you E. Okay, so uh, problem is clear. So after that you can actually, uh, from this you can have the energy levels. Okay, what are the energy values admissible to this potential for that potential value and the A value. Then from that you can actually, so finally what I require. Okay, so what I require I will tell you now. 
So you have to plot a graph which have the potential plotted because this is basically uh, the energy. Okay. So you draw the okay. The, this may not be zero. Okay. So zero is uh, somewhere here. Okay. So you plot the uh, what are the energy values you are getting for this. Okay. Find out how many solutions are there. Okay. Then you plot the wave function. Okay. So these are all real wave functions. There is no problem. Okay. So you plot the wave function in the same plot. Okay. So this is x. Right. And this is minus a and this is plus a. So you plot. So you can have a two scales for y. One is for the, uh, that potential thing and second one is for the energy. Okay. So in the same plot you have to do both the potential, the energy levels and the wave function whatever wave function you are getting. Okay. So you have to do this. So that is what I require at the end. For each energy value you have to plot the potential the other wave function. Okay. In that you should have the potential also marked. Okay. So that uh, final what you are supposed to submit is clear now. Uh, right now we are only done for uh, the even one okay so only yeah yeah now only even okay so i'm uh, so this whatever discussed problem okay so only even you do okay so so this solution this equation only you have to solve right now now uh, how are you doing going to solve this okay so that uh, you can have a uh, because you see this is uh, uh, mega electron volt and uh, you can see the fermi uh, level I means fermi uh, unit okay so you can work in, in some unit which will give uh, actually that will be better for computation instead of working on the actual scale you work in a some unit so so what we will do is uh, yeah so you take uh, this uh, yeah Actually, I will share it in uh, YouTube. Okay, I am already recording it. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so two m by h cross square. So this value, you can multiply c square here and c square here. So because that is the one uh, quantity involved in uh, these equations, right? So. So what is 2 mc square in terms of mega electron volt? So you can write it as 2 into 940 mega electron volt. Okay. 2 into 940 mega electron volt. And h cross c is uh, 9, 197.32. 3.2. Okay. So if you uh, so two into okay. So m c square is I am writing in terms of 940 mega electron volt. H cross c is 197.32 mega electron volt f m. Okay. So this one, if you solve, uh, what you get is uh, I may share some uh, document also. 0.04829. What will be the unit? Minus 2. So 2 mc square by h cross square c square is uh, this quantity. Okay. So now you can see you are uh, beta is what was that quantity beta root minus 2 m e by h cross square. So 
you work in the energy in units of mega electron volt you work in the x the x value in terms of fermi unit okay so so this one what you have to substitute is this value only okay because you completely working that unit now then uh, yeah alpha is also uh, same thing uh, because there are also 2m by h cross square is there so now here what you can do is this equation because you know that alpha is equal to root uh, m 2m by x cross square e plus v0 so what you can do now is uh, you substitute psi is equal to alpha a and uh, eta is equal to beta a okay so what is uh, psi square plus eta square what is psi square plus eta square can you just tell me Two m by h cross square. Sure. Are you sure? Yes, sir. into uh, a square. Okay. So you can uh, substitute two m by h cross square as whatever earlier number I given. V naught. How much what value you will substitute for V naught? 83 and what do you substitute substitute for a 2 just 2 you are working in that unit now okay so your length the unit is now uh, basic unit is uh, fermi so if you do that this this will you get it as 16.083 because we don't want to deal with very large than very small number in the uh, uh, computer okay so this one you get it as 16.083 so now it is clear see uh, so what will be this equal to this equation now alpha a is uh, psi so psi 10 psi minus what is beta it is eta okay zero but there is a relation between eta and psi what is that relation this one okay okay so i can substitute eta is equal to square root of 16.083 minus psi square so finally you have to solve this equation for the roots roots of what psi okay so you find out the roots of this equation for psi so there what you have to do is you have to do the for now you just to do the bisection algorithm okay so the bisection algorithm so this is a function f of x you know that there is a root here then this you put x minus and x plus so what you get is if the x uh, root is in between f of x minus into f of x plus will be always less than zero okay next what you do is you find out one point xc which is equal to x plus plus x minus by 2 okay if f of x plus f of xc is less than 0 what does that mean if 
no so see so now you have to do the iteratively okay so bisection method is that so first you found uh, root is between two points that is x minus and x plus now you took the midpoint of that that is x plus plus x minus by 2 now if i suppose i find that f of x plus into f of x c is less than 0 so that means x c is left of that root only so now your x minus is become x c otherwise x plus equal to x c ok. So, this is this is all bisection algorithm ok you have to do this. Re yeah, so see initially see there are uh, 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 there is a root here you know that that is some root x r ok. Now x minus is less than x r and x plus is greater than x r. Now if you find out f of x minus into f of x plus because this is positive and this is negative always f of x minus into f of x plus will be less than 0 because the root is between. So this is positive value and this is negative value. Now you take a mid of that basically bisection of that so x plus plus x mi minus by 2 so that point you calling it xc that x xc can be either here or here either the other side of this root or left side of this root suppose for to find out that what you do is you find out f of x plus into f of xc that means f of x plus you know the other side okay and f of xc if it is still less than 0 because f of x minus into f of x plus is less than 0. If it is still less than 0, that means you have to just update the x minus. Right? Because if it is a minus, you know less than 0. Now, if this condition is still satisfied, that means x minus is equal to, you can update that whatever x minus to xc. If it is positive, that means f of x plus this into this is positive, actually you should not update x minus because you have to update the x plus. Is it clear? Yes, sir. No, sir, one question. Yeah. Uh, sir, if the root between x minus and x plus is uh, more than 1. Ah, no, no, you can't, you can't do that. That's what you have to, you have to graphically, you have to uh, find out actually there is only one root in between. Okay. So, if there is a more than one root, obviously this condition will not be satisfied. Okay. So, you are, so you, to, basically bisection algorithm is to find out exactly what is the root. But to apply the bisection algorithm, you have to find out because you should have some idea okay the root lies between some two values and there is no other root in between okay so all of you just think about this uh, for a uh, two minutes and see whether you can actually program it okay So what is the question? Sir, the graph indicates what I mean. Yeah, graph is basically uh, the uh, x axis is x. Okay. So that is, you know, our problem is it's a one dimension problem. So potential is uh, minus a to a. Okay. So this is x axis. So this is x. Uh, x axis is basically the, the position x, okay. And y axis, there are two scales for that. One is for the energy, okay. So one scale you can make it as an energy. There you have to uh, mark the potential because you know the potential, okay. So it's just a pictorially uh, because 
you are plotting the wave function for this so wave function versus x you have to do okay so then uh, you have to then you have to uh, plot the uh, potential also so what is the what is the reason for uh, telling that you have to do both together do can you give me uh, reason for that why i am asking you to plot both together the potential and uh, the wave function because they both changes with the position um, yeah both changes with the position that is correct okay but why you want both in a one same figure Is the depth of the wave you get more function. See, the y scale is different, but x scale is same. That is very important. Okay, so now when you plot this, you will clearly understand. Okay, is the classical particle? You know that there is no nothing outside that well. Okay, so here you are here you are going to get that wave function outside that potential well. Okay. So yes, this two are the two particles. Yeah. Okay. Sir, the yes. That that is the major. Yeah. Tell me. One more thing is the the root x r. Root. X r in between x minus and x plus. No 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 no. See, uh, let's understand that uh, this is nothing to do with our problem. Okay. This is I just wanted to explain the bisection algorithm. Okay. Okay, sir. So in this case, your f of x is psi tan psi minus psi e. That is your f of x. Okay. You are solving this roots, finding out the roots of this equation. So you are so x. The x variable is not x in your case. It is psi. So in that case, psi versus psi only we have to plot. So so bisection algorithm. I was generally talking about a function f. Now uh, you have to do for function psi. Function is psi tan psi minus eta. For eta you can write it in terms of psi. So psi minus and the psi plus. Okay. Then you have to think about psi. Yeah. So this is a, a bisection algorithm I separately discussed. Now your variable is psi, and uh, the function is psi tan psi minus eta. Okay. Okay, sir. But but in the uh, in our what you have to plot is not psi. What you have to plot is x. That is the origin because you have to convert phi. So this will give you the solution e energy e. Okay. So from that you have to go and find out uh, the wave function. Wave function is basically there are three regions, right? So each region. So you have to find out c a t. Then beta you can get if you know the energy. Then you have to basically plot this versus x with the known values of a, b, c. Okay, sir. Thank you. How are you going to normalize the function? Because when you normalize only, you can get the one unknown. How are we going to normalize the function? You can get the last unknown only by normalizing the wave function. So how are we going to normalize the wave function? Any answer? Sir, sir, sign square to one. Yeah. Yeah. Integration. Yeah. Integration. Yeah. Integration minus infinity to infinity mod sine square d x equal to one. With this, this the condition we apply. But uh, how are we going to do that integration? Can you do analytically? Can you do that integration analytically? Sir, so using assumptions rule. Assumptions rule, what do you mean? Because this psi is there are three regions, okay. So this is not so. Finally, it will comes to 
what kind of integration because this is only psi you have to take more psi square so psi is this is, yeah this can be done analytically exponential and cos square only that's what i am saying this is mod psi square okay this is psi square mod don't worry about because there is no compress it's a psi square what you are having is psi in the different three regions okay now you have to take the square of that so this one you can write it as minus infinity to minus a plus a to minus infinity to minus a plus minus a to plus a plus a to infinity you can write do that but minus infinity to a okay it is square of the function at that point okay so e power minus 2 beta x right we can integrate it e power minus 2 beta x yes okay. what about what about a to infinity it's integrable right e power so integrable okay you can do that okay then b cos alpha x also you can do that there is no problem okay so i am i am leaving it to you okay so you think that analytically doing and getting the answer for a the unknown is easier than numerically doing and getting the answer for a okay so that is preference is given to you okay the choice is given to you okay so you can either do analytically or numerically numerically uh, just uh, um, okay another thing uh, we want to see is uh, because numerically you have to discretize the point and do the integration okay so this up to you okay there are two options one is either doing analytically or other one is numerically because this obviously a integrable function okay square integral function so see whether numeric analytically it is easy then you go ahead with that if it is numerically easy you go ahead with that so i i am not giving you an uh, choice you give you choose yourself for our initial case hmm. can i first uh, plot the function and then get an idea of where the loop is going to be and then choose my initial case or that that is a better case that is a better way of doing because this is a tan function if you yeah, so, uh, if, if you if you small changes little bit you you are completely you will miss the root okay so so it is better first to you first to first to plot the uh, the psi because see this plot is there in almost all quantum mechanics textbook right you must have seen that yeah psi yeah. times psi minus eta it is there in because then they put a one line like that psi, that is basically the line psi okay wherever it, it intersects is line eta wherever it intersects that is the root that is what the all quantum mechanics textbooks says up to that point okay so but nobody give you the solution there exactly what is the energy value and for a particular problem okay so you you have to plot it and see where the root lies okay which mean what and what value root lies then you go for the solution okay but without plotting also you can do okay that is what i am saying the generalization of the problem is something you have to clearly look at okay suppose without plotting without our in, in, uh, uh, in, in, uh, in between the program runs there suppose there is no intervention by our ourselves suppose you just changing a and e it should give you the value then there is no plotting arise in between so you can even do that bisection algorithm in a efficient way okay so whatever you are, you are plotting and seeing is basically you change the psi value you zoom it and all those things but that you can actually do numerically right for the initial case only we can put one loop and see at what value you first get the product as negative right ha huh. so that that's what you are do so because you know the values between 0 and minus 83 because uh, i'll tell you the past students have done that also without plotting okay they uh, coded it in the numerics itself okay so that they actually try for a large uh, interval then they keep on decreasing it 
then whenever it is becoming a uh, negative then again confirming it they will again reduce it and see so all those things you can do it program but i am not asking you to do that now okay now you your program need not be a general program now it is you can plot it and see the values and plug it in and then you can do the bisection algorithm so i am not asking you to generalize the program right away but you can do that any other question so couple of things uh, so uh, solving this transcendental equation using bisection algorithm then finding an energy by knowing the uh, relation between e and the psi we know that then error you can fix it using the because e is between 0 and minus 83 so some point 0.01% error for e you can calculate or corresponding error in psi then uh, finding out the unknowns okay and normalizing and finding out the last unknown that either you can you do numerically or uh, here uh, analytically that is up to you you can choose whichever uh, you want and plotting the wave function and the potential in the same graph for all the wave functions not just a single one for all the wave functions okay so and another thing when you plot the major area of the figure we should be visible okay because you know that it is minus infinity to infinity so you don't need to go for a very large x value because if you go for the large x value your solution will be confined to very small area so the solution should be clearly visible and also the tail should be visible because you know that it is going to zero so that tail up to certain level you should be visible so that the plotting also you should uh, so that's our part of the program okay how do you present your result also okay so that is also important so yeah any other question so all of you are clear about the problem right there is nothing unknown now for you everything is clear because you all done uh, at least one quantum mechanics course and you don't have to actually look at quantum mechanics because everything is explained here so you don't have to worry much okay so you have to just do whatever is there in this okay so if there is no uh, question on this part i will stop this one okay so we can discuss anything else if you want to discuss